Hello and welcome to my <coughs> review of design patterns. Uh, now I want to introduce you myself. Who am I? Let me just quickly click here. So my name is Alexander. I'm a freelancer out of uh, Germany, Nuremberg. Here you see my services which I provide to my clients. Most times it is software development, quality assurance. I help uh, middle-sized companies to improve the quality of their software. I can train your staff and bring better in software engineering practices. So if you're interested, you can always reach me out through my email, web page and the Google Android app. So basically that's it for me. And now let me speak about design patterns. So today I want to present my understanding of observer pattern. Uh, the example which I will discuss is from the book Head First Design Patterns. And it works like this. Uh, you have two interfaces and two classes. So each class have some function in this pattern, in the observer pattern. And basically major thing about observer pattern as I understand is the concrete subject. So let me just quickly tell you what I mean by that. The concrete subject holding the state. And in the book it was presented the case where you need to program weather station application. So why it is uh, interesting? Because you need to think about how it is all uh, linked linked together, which class call another class on, and why. So basically it, it goes like this. The subject consists a state and control controls the state. The observer observer classes they getting hold of the state object and upon this state of the subject object they update own state it's it i think it is not <laughs> well um i don't think that is very well good description from me but once again you have interface subject from which you inherit three methods register observer remove observer notify observer in the concrete subject class you have in implementations of register observer remove observer notify observer and in the interface observer you have update which is responsible for the updating the state of concrete observer and the interface making sure that each class which implement such behavior will update on state. So, so in this example, you have concrete observer, which have method, update, other methods. But actually, you you can imagine that concrete observer gets holds of uh, of concrete subject class or object, better to say, but object because you instantiate a concrete subject and then it reads values from the concrete subject and updates the own state of concrete observer. Um, in Java API you have a observer class book design patterns head first design patterns kind of have a criticism against such implementation because they saying that it is then difficult to have many 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 classes which can inherit observer behavior so they actually prefer that the observer will be like an interface stuff and in my point of view when i'm thinking about having such uh, 
value sharing ability it's kind of against major op uh, concerns so you, that 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 you don't uh, share uh, the state of the whole ob object between many objects so you try to actually protect the state of the given uh, object so op says you you, you want to have a uh, clear communication lines between different uh, objects but all objects itself has own behavior which is not uh, so other other you have taken the two two objects and they need uh, do not uh, share share own state so you have in this example I know I'm bubbling through, but you have in this example the situation that any given observer object know, know about concrete subject state. And and why it why it is needed? Well in the book Head First Design Patterns present the following example. Um before I'm doing that, I just let you what I'm do, uh, what I'm using. I'm using Visual Paradigm, pretty neat software. And here's a UML diagram. So basically, this is one-to-one -one diagram from the book, but I, I, I think it's more uh, understandable when I do that in the program Visual Paradigm. So as I said earlier, you have subject interface, observer in interface and we all know that you cannot instantiate directly from the interface it's a contract which makes sure that your class which inherits uh, the methods from the interface making sure that you need to write it down in your classes and basically your whether data is uh, has behavior of subject and you have your concrete subject which has uh, which has inheritance to the subject interface the concrete observer is just in use have use be relationship with a concrete subject so basically I have my concrete subject and there on the concrete subject you register your observers and observers when they registered they can read state of the subject I think the best way to understand how it wor really works is to write and read the code of example for the observer pattern and you can find it on my github I posted the code today my last thoughts about uh, observer pattern it is uh, in my point of view it's kind of hard uh, to have it uh, tested right because if you change the subject state uh, you may need to make sure that the observers understand the values of the changed state so to, I think it is not it goes not well with the OOP as a uh, technique because in object oriented programming you are trying to have separation of states because you are trying to avoid mutability of the states and in my point of view to have such design pattern in your project can make some things complicated book itself say it's not actually so difficult but they claiming that is clean way to do weather station with such of such pattern but for me it's I think it is hard to test because you need to pull uh, pull out of the from the weather data class all of the values and then make sure that you can pass it directly to the observer so I I didn't wrote too much test for that but anyway my point of view use it with caution observer pattern is not uh, a pattern which you 
basically see every day in your field of work I'm pretty sure of it because non <laughs> because many of programmers won't like when you have shareable state between many 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 uh, objects you clearly uh, violating op principles by actually doing that so use it with caution and and be make sure that you understand the use uh, the case where you need to use such pattern and this is all from me but i can clearly say i would not i would i would I, uh, it should be a very exceptional case where I can use such pattern. I personally say no advantage of using this pattern because what if you have rapid requirements change and your weather data have, I don't know, additional values. You add those values and you break uh, immediately the observer classes because observer classes they get hold of all of the states and if they don't understand one of the states of the visa data class then you have a problem because it needs to be handled in the concrete observer classes and I don't think that is um, it should be clear case where where you can use observer pattern this is what I mean but me personally, I actually not big fan of big fan of it because it's hard to test and because uh, with rapid changing of requirements, it can bring only problems. Because at some point of view, uh, if your uh, observers did change a lot or your subject share, share, shared shared subject did change a lot, you need to make sure that it's then covered in your but it is not so easy to, to to change because if you not able to give further your data and the data stays corrupt because of that it is potential potential problem in your project can be and that's it for my side thank you for watching the code as I said earlier is already on my github repo check it out and I would gladly see you soon once again on my path through the design patterns. Thank you all. Bye bye.